All right, more with linear regression. So in the previous video, uh, I introduced this example where we are trying to study the correlation between temperature and hot chocolate sales. So I randomly select 10, I think there are here, 11 maybe, two, four, six, eight, 10, 11 days. And on each day, I record the daily high temperature and how many hot chocolate sales some kid has at some hot chocolate sale stand or something, whatever. Uh, and I want to study the correlation between these two variables. And it might help to think about temperature as causing hot chocolate sales, higher temperature causing hot chocolate sales to decrease. But what you'll see is we don't really get causation. We only get correlation between the two variables. And so what I want to do in this is start to study that correlation. Well, in this specific kind of contrived example, you might be able to just look at it. Be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The sales are big when the temperature is low and the sales are low when the temperature is big. It kind of looks like one goes up, the other one goes down. And that's true. Although maybe you can imagine a less contrived example where it's not quite so obvious, where there's more observations, maybe a thousand instead of 11, and they're on several different pages and then they're not ordered, where one of the variables is increasing. Uh, maybe you can imagine a situation where just looking at the data makes it really hard to draw a conclusion about the correlation between your two variables. Well, what would be nice is if there was some way to get like a visual, right? So instead of just looking at the data itself, if we had some sort of a plot that we could draw that would show all the different observations and then maybe we could look at that plot and better analyze the data by looking at that plot, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna create something called a scatter plot of the data. And the way you make a scatter plot of the data, well, a scatter plot is a two-dimensional graph. So you always need an x-axis and a y-axis. The x-axis is this horizontal one here. The y-axis is the vertical one. And importantly, you're always going to put your explanatory variable on your x-axis. So instead of labeling this as explanatory, if you wanted to label this with an x, that's fine too. And instead of labeling this as your response variable, you could label it with a y. So the point is on my x-axis down here, I have temperature. And on my y-axis, I have sales. And then you can look at the temperature and it looks like it goes from 15 to 105. So I don't know, maybe a scale of 10 would make sense. 10... 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, sure. Now my x-axis is both labeled and scaled. And I could do the same thing for my y-axis. It goes up to what, 125 I think is the high. So maybe same scale, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130. That would be sufficient. And then what I want to do is for each observation each day, I want to put a dot on my scatter plot that records both the temperature and the sales on that day. So for this first day when it was 15 degrees and I sold 100 cups or somebody sold 100 cups, I come over here to 15. Right here's 10 and 20, 15 is halfway between them. And I go up here to 100 and I put a dot where the X is 15 and the Y is 100. If you ever plotted points on a coordinate axis like X and Y coordinates, uh, that's all we're doing for these points. Look for 30 and then 125. So here's 30. Here is 125, give or take. It's hard to draw these. Uh, 35 and 120. I guess 35 would be a little bit more than 30. 120 would be somewhere up here. And if you kind of continue in that fashion, you can put all these dots up on here and you've created a scatter plot. The idea with the scatter plot is maybe you can draw better conclusions from this picture than you can just by looking at the data. Again, this is kind of a contrived example, so you might be able to just look at the data in this case, but you can imagine if there weren't 11 dots, if there were 1,100 dots, it might be really useful to have a scatter plot. The connection that we're gonna end up drawing from this scatter plot uh, refers to the correlation between the two variables. And the idea is if you look at the dots, generally speaking, when you read them from left to right, do they go down or they go up? Right? Not in every single case, but generally speaking, maybe you can kind of see this pattern here where most of the dots, or I guess all the dots, most of the dots are kind of fall in this range. Kind of looks like when they go to the right, they get lower and lower and lower. And maybe you can kind of see that from the picture. If you kind of see that from the picture, that's perfect. That's how you create a scatter plot. One more thing I'm supposed to show you, how to make this on your calculator. The logic for making this on your calculator is in this case with only 11 observations, it was pretty easy to make it by hand. But again, consider the 1100 observation case, you might want to make it on your scatter plot. So the way you make a scatter plot, well, it's the same way we've made any plot in this class. It's a three-step process. Step one, you got to enter your data, right? You want to make a scatter plot, you better tell your calculator what you want it to make a scatter plot of. So I'll type those observations in lists. 
All right, and then once you've completed step one, once you have all those observations into a list, just make note of where you put your X's and your Y's because you'll have to make sure your calculator knows what your X's are and what your Y's are. So I put my X's in L1 and my Y's in L2. Step two is tell your calculator what kind of plot you want. It's under the stat plot menu. So second and then Y equals to get into stat plots. We'll turn one of these guys on and then select the one that kind of sort of looks like a scatter plot. So we've learned how to make this third type a histogram in this class, this fourth type a box plot, this sixth type a normal probability plot. We'll never do the fifth type and we'll never do the second type in this class. Um, but the first type kind of looks like a scatter plot and that's the one I'm supposed to teach you now. Tell you got a scatter plot, it's like, oh, well, for a scatter plot, I need to know where your X's are and where your Y's are. I put my X's in L1 and my Y's in L2. Then this last thing here, they're gonna put a bunch of dots right on their scatter plot. And it's just asking you, do you want little squares or pluses or pixels to represent the dots? It really doesn't matter what you choose. I mean, I guess if you had thousands of these, you might want a smaller indicator of the observations. Uh, but I don't know. I think that this is fine. Uh, so that's step two. Step three, this is where you either zoom or you program the window. You can do either one here. Zoom stat is totally fine. If you want to hit the zoom key, just make sure your cursor is blinking like a normal cursor. You don't have alpha lock on. And then hit zoom. And the ninth thing listed is zoom stat. And your calculator will guess how you want to scale these. It'll show you all the dots and you'll get this picture right here. Fine, that works. Um, what I like to do is program the window. This I'll consider this optional. Instead of zoom stat, I like to tell my window that my X's, I'd like to picture them from zero up to maybe 110. So it looks just like the one that I drew down there. And I want them to increase in increments of 10. I want their little to be little hash marks 10 apart. And then maybe my Y's, I want those to go from zero up to, what did I do, 130 here. And I also want those to increase by tens. And if you put in all that information and hit graph, it'll give you more or less the same scatter plot. But now you have kind of the axes scaled and lay, scaled in here, which makes it a little easier to copy down. Either way is totally fine by me. One more comment here, the trace key can be really useful. If you hit the trace key here, it'll take you through all your different observations. So this observation that's highlighted here, the one that's right here, they're saying it has an X of 15 and a Y of 100. So that can help you when you're drawing them. Just press to the right and you'll kind of cycle through all the different observations. It can help you see ones that are kind of hidden down here, like the one at 104 and one that barely even makes it on my graph. And that's how you make a scattered plot, both by hand and in your calculator. Um, and I think that that's all that I was looking for out of this video.